Yo, yo, it's your boy Don Prince. Today's podcast will be about uh, my time as Freedom Fighter 216. A lot of people around the city of Cleveland know me as Don Prince um, and Don Prince Media, the person that goes around doing videos, this, that, and the third. And I wanted to break a, a little piece of myself to them and bring a little piece of myself to them because I see people like uh, uh, My Loud Radio, shout out to them, and uh, her and uh, Bashir Jones going around the city. And um, them are the main two people that I actually watch right now. And um, I admire what they do. And um, I came on here to basically shout them out and let them know a little bit about myself because uh, a lot of people don't actually know that who Freedom Fighter 216 is because Freedom Fighter 216 then roll in a group. Uh, Freedom Fighter 216, uh, not to take any uh, or put anybody down that, uh, that knows that it's in numbers is how you uh, move chains and any situation is through numbers um, I kind of got exhausted <clears throat> excuse me I kind of got exhausted <clears throat> excuse me I kind of got exhausted as Freedom Fighter 216 and um, it's always in me um, Freedom Fighter 216 but I was kind of exhausted from being that uh, character in my life and Freedom Fighter 216 was around before Don Prince it was um I was tired of police brutality and um, the government and uh, the lack of knowledge of my people. I was I was tired of those things, so I had started a a, a figure by the name of uh, Freedom Fighter Two One Six. And what what I was to do was I created a shirt that said "F the Police." Uh, I wanted to go around and see the people that's in these gangs if they scared to wear an "F the Police" shirt. A lot of people were scared to wear my shirt and my design. It's an original design. I wore that shirt and went out and uh, and and got into it with the police and um, voiced my opinion. And it y'all y'all don't know the rush that it gave me during this time of of expression and when I was in school and things of that sort. So it's an audio that I would like you all to listen to, uh, which will also be shown right here. Um, on the screen for the people that is uh, also viewing this on my YouTube channel. And also, this will be put up on my Instagram channel. I can be found across all platforms at uh, D-O-M-P-R-I-N-T-S. That's Don Prince. And um, you might not be able to That's find these, they but here it they goes. Take your energy. You, you sit there and be enjoying your day. You just, just traveling, cruising. You like, shit, I ain't doing nothing. Next thing you know, somebody in the back of you talking about, uh, give me this, give me that. I'm like, modern day motherfucking coach riders, though. Modern day robbers, though. Just in white and black cars, all black cars. The fuck? But we supposed to just be sitting here. And people, they, they, they go keep voting for this shit, though. They keep, oh yeah, we gotta vote. These people was asking for, for the right to smoke weed. That should be part of your liberty. It's a freedom. How could you tell somebody that this is illegal when it's the right? You got the right to pursue the happiness, the life of li the, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And they talk about that. That, contra that contradict the fuck out of shit. You telling somebody they can't smoke weed unless it's a medical purpose. Who the fuck are you? People been smoking weed before you came here trying to regulate shit, man. That shit just don't make no sense to me. People are like, oh... And then the people that will vote for a motherfucking casino, when that's a clearly a sin or a gambling debt, or they'll vote for all this fucked up medicine, but you won't vote for uh, for for marijuana use. A marijuana use help more shit than gambling and they medicine. But ain't nobody saying shit about that though. Fuck them, man. Fuck the police. Fuck the government, man. For real, they not in our best interest. Everybody should have free food stamps. They don't. And the money not real. Money already not real. It's fiat. It's not backed by no gold and silver. We all in trouble right now. I'm really tired of people, man. That's why I'm like, if the quickest I can get some money, but that's why niggas be trying to hurry up and rob people because they like, shit, I got to get this come up. And people act like they don't understand why niggas rob people. I ain't saying I, ain't, I, ain't saying I agree with it because it's stealing. It's, it's depriving somebody else of their right to pursue the happiness. But at the same time, you like, shit, these niggas are only robbing for shit that don't got no value. Only what you place on it. 
But then as soon as I want to go grow some food in this field over here, they want to be like, oh, yeah, you can't do that. You need a fucking permit. Fuck you. I don't need no permit to grow food on no fucking grass. People been doing this. You can't tell no motherfucking squirrel don't go bury no nuts for the next season. You hear me? They can't do that, man. Motherfuckers always want to be in control of somebody, though, man. It, it, it kills my mind, though. I, I feel that they owe me a check. They owe me a check. They can say here, every time I get into it with the police officer asking them questions, they want to be like, they want to challenge the fact that I got a CCW. I'm like, sir, I'm not out here flashing my gun. I'm not rolling up on niggas. Why are you challenging the fact that I got a CCW? Because I challenged you? The fuck? You up here, you trying to deprive me of my pursuit of happiness right now, though. But I'm supposed to just go with it. Be hindered in my travels. Yeah, right. What'd he say? What, 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 uh... What'd he say? You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You want me to fight for your country, for your corporation, but you won't even stand up for me, for my rights and my religious beliefs. Everybody just looked at Muhammad Ali like he was just talking stuff. No, he was saying some real shit. People don't give a hell about us. Michael Jackson, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. We the little people, my new. Yeah, just because how I'm turned up, I'm crazy. No, man, it's just common sense. And then people don't got that. Right. Excuse the language in that audio. Now, when I had created that audio, I, um, that wasn't even an audio, it was a video. And I'm glad that I actually recorded it because it was about four to five years ago when I created it um, while I was in college. And I was very upset by a lot of things, um, like the lack of knowledge was the the main thing of our people, and uh, as you heard me saying, they're voting, and um, our people are voting for stuff that, you know. And when I say our people, I'm talking about people. Uh, at this time, at that time, I was speaking on just um, the people who they call African Americans, uh, which are actually the natural peoples of the land that which they uh, was taken over and their food, how they eat, how they live was taken over and they had to become dependent on other people. And people act like that these people are not mentally disturbed. Every person, every human of African American descent uh, is born. I'm not no doctor, I'm not none of that stuff, I don't care who got a problem with what I'm saying. In my opinion, every human that is born of African descent has a mental disorder. So if everybody came from this African descent or originated from this African descent, then you have a mental disorder. Oh, but particularly the people that was marked with the color of uh, brown and the shades of copper, shades of black, I don't see no gray people, so I'm going to again say brown. The people of brown, copper, colored, complexion, people, dark brown, light brown, them people. They have been mentally defeated because they were taken away from everything that they naturally do. And imagine learning and reading about that after being called retarded, slow, stupid. Oh yeah, I was very retarded, very slow, very stupid. But the people that was calling me all those things, imagine when you learn before them, and now you can look at them like, oh, well, you're just as slow, just as stupid, just as retarded as I am. I'm willing to fight. I was so willing to fight, I was so thirsty to fight because I'm like, man, these people cannot have us in this much control. And it's not that it's not about rage and war. But you gotta understand what type of war. If you go go into battle, you gotta understand what type of battle. And um I'm not gonna make this one that long because I, I got a lot of stuff to to touch on and people always ask me to, you know, make make audios or go around doing my videos. And I've been just making videos and photography 
um, graphic designs for people, but I also became an artist to be able to freely express myself. And uh, one thing that I urge uh, My Loud Radio and Bashir Jones, one thing is people will get in my car when I'm doing the drives and stuff, and they'll tell me uh, when I'm when they hear me speak, they'll be like, "Oh, Bashir Jones." And the one thing I urge, because I don't know the, uh, Bashir Jones personally, and My Loud Radio only met her twice and don't know her personally, but I like what they're doing. The one thing that I urge in my whole madness of why I was so upset was I urged them to understand what the term black, what it did to our culture. A lot of people, like when I was doing my reading, it's not that I'm a know-it-all or anything. I stopped talking to people. I stopped going out there. But the one thing that I do is I keep, I keep on telling people when I see them. I, I preach to them, if you call it preaching. I enlighten them. That's what I'm doing. I'm planting a seed for them so they can grow. But the one thing that I urge, I urge those two people because of what I'm seeing them do. The one thing that I urge them to do, and as a councilman, Bashir, if you 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 go hear this, you go listen to it, because I'm going to make sure I tag you in it. So the one thing that I tell my passengers that probably haven't gotten this message to you is all the all the antics and going around, um, you know, teaching and and saying you go do this for the community. The one thing that Don Prince on life challenges both of you, because, you know, we out here. What I challenge you all to do is our school system, right? It's not for us. Never been. Hasn't been, I should say. Not never. Hasn't been. And the one thing that all of our youth, your your child, my child, and any other child out here, even how technical that this is, is we don't even know where we live. I had to learn where I lived. And when I learned where I live, I challenged other people like, hey, do you know where you live? And most people think, most of us, natural borns, the, the people who we argue is the chosen people. Most of them don't know where they live. They don't know where I live. They think I is tied to an address. I is not tied to an address. I is tied to wherever I go. I is tied to this body right now. And that's where I live, right here. What's your address, sir? Oh, my address? You need to know my address? That's a different question. But if you want to know where I live, I live right here. So one thing that I urge our people to do is in these schools, get more programs teaching them about law. That's the most important thing that you can do as a freedom fighter out here. That's why I was upset. There's no growing programs in our school. Like chill bumps up my arm for the people that can see this video. Chill bumps up my arm. This is this is the stuff that 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 touched and aggravated me so much. Because our people, regardless if you believe in the Bible, the Quran, Buddha, the Torah, any of that, it says that our people will perish for their lack of knowledge. And you're out here fighting the court system, fighting the police, but you know. You have no idea what law is. You're going around telling people that you're a person. And in law, a person is a piece of paper. It's artificial. In that beginning of that video, if you rewind this video and listen to what I say, and when you see my displeasure, that's not me acting for a camera. Anytime that I went out with my T-shirt on that said and read F the police. Anytime that I went out with that, that wasn't an act. That wasn't for nobody else. That was to see that I'm serious about this, man. Our people is in trouble for their lack of knowledge. They don't know what law is. And the words of trickery and deceit. From not knowing the words or having a, a, 
Oh, just like I said, person. Just like not knowing what minor. It, it, it gets deep, man. So if you don't start these children, not no teenagers off. I'm talking about children. If you're not starting these children at the ages of five months, a little earlier, I mean five months, five years. Five years old, it should be no reason, especially if you got your children out here acting like they have guns. We promoting that. Yeah, we go get them started early. If they go get guns, Caucasian people, got, oh, not Caucasian, white people, got they, there's no such thing as white and black people. White is a concept and black is a concept. You go live in a black life or you go live in a white life. But in actuality, these are genes. You know, we are genes, genetics. We all come from a source. But I'm going to get my kid learning how to use guns early because violence only begot violence. See, it's deeper for me than, I don't like having to come on here and talk about this stuff. I let the people that's doing it out front up there doing it. But I am a person that rode by myself and did that. So the one thing that I was challenging people then, that I'm still challenging them now, is to read and learn that law. Get law. I'll be impressed when they get law into schools at an earlier age. And I mean, just learning definitions. Because definitions is very important because our people is being cheated by lawyers. They're being cheated by police. They're being cheated by the government. The judge, they know, they're, the judge know that you are uh, ignorant, that you are a minor when you come in there. That's why somebody has to represent who you are because you have no idea. If you don't know where you live, you have no idea who you are. And that's period. So these definitions, when the lawyer's talking, this, that, and the third, you're not knowing what's going on. And, and that's what was upsetting me. And, and at that time was when I said, I'm going to grow my fro. So when you see that video, if you've seen the video, I was going to grow my fro. I was going to be Afrocentric and this, that, and that. I was going to embrace who I am. And then so many times we all, we all come back and we be like, ah, man, is I'm supposed to be doing this or is I'm supposed to be doing something else? But today I'm doing this. Me personally, I'm doing this today. I want to uh, speak on uh, police brutality, and a lot of it will still stem from off of this topic because we are at a time and have been at a time where this lack of knowledge and really, if, if I was really still, if I was on my stuff, like the knowledge is still in me of what I've, what I've read and what I continue to read. But I like to make sure, because there's people out there that these perfectionists in when you're talking, they want to pick everything out of what you say and what you do and try to throw it in your face. I'm not here to, to throw anything in anybody's face. I'm here to challenge and plant seeds and, and reap what I'm sowing. So... It's a it's a it's a, a notion that we we can't grow or can't be technical. We can't be technical, but like I said, when you in that courtroom, they're gonna be technical with you. When you're when the when the police officer can lie to uphold justice, why can't I? That's 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 what I would like to know. So these people right now is uh it's a it's a situation where we have officers uh caucasian officers mainly from from what's seen and you can't always trust everything you've seen but if you lived it you can almost be like yeah i believe that happened caucasian officers uh white police officers is what they like to be considered as some of them are being aggressive, overly aggressive to the black people, who they call black, the aboriginals, copper colored, Afro-American, Afro-centric. They're being over aggressive to them. And in uh, one time I read, I'm gonna wrap this up with, with this. 
I don't promote violence. I had a problem with Martin Luther King for a long time because I was a, a Malcolm X, a person that respected what Malcolm X was saying, but once I read fully about Malcolm X and, uh, and learned fully about Martin Luther King, more about Martin Luther King and more about Malcolm X, when I looked at the two missions, they were similar missions. Martin, Malcolm X just said, defend yourself, man. Don't let nobody come spit in your face or punch you in the eye or spray you with something because you was here. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock so happened to land on us. And I wonder if Caucasian people, Mexican people, Chinese, Manchurian, whoever you want to say, I wonder if they ever understood what that meant. We didn't go and put you, go and put you as slaves, but they say every civilization had been slaves. That's a time for another story. But we didn't make you slaves. You got to America, those people that was already here with my color skin look just like me. And you admit that you stole this. You admit it. It's Malcolm X calling you out. So Martin Luther King, he had this thing where he like, yeah, I understand all that. I could beat him up, but violence only begot violence. I'm not scared of these people. I'm strong enough to stand here right in your face. Go ahead, spit. That's what you want to do? You want to spit on me? Go ahead, spit. That's all, that's all you got? Oh, you could punch me in my face? I'm still going to be alive. Oh, you sick this dog? I'm, I'm still alive. I'm still standing, Antoine Fisher. I'm still standing. I'm still strong. After all that that you tried, I'm still right here. You hear me? That's Martin Luther King. Michael Max said, don't put your hands on me because if I ain't touching you, don't touch me. That's the rule that you teach in, in school when kids little. Treat others how you would like to be treated. I'm going be, to simplify this for you, Martin. I ain't got time for all that stuff, man. Don't put your hands on me, man. So something that I have read, not that I learned from either of these two, something during my journey of reading, uh, the UCCs or the USCs, something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember what it was, and then I'm going to put it in the video proportion of this. So if you would like to see the video, remember to check me out on YouTube if you would like to see some of these, the video interactions of, of these podcasts. But... Again, it was this, it was a, a code or not a code, a law, something that said, because we have the, when, no, I'm paraphrasing here, because we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that if a police officer is doing something wrong, and you actually think that that police officer is doing something wrong, if that police officer, and you know your law, then you can kick that police officer's ass because it said you can refute. And we go look up what refute me. At this time, I, at the time where I read this, I, I actually knew what I was talking about on this situation verbatim. But every time I noticed, I said, if a person really try to fight back on the police, they got the chance to kill them right there. And then they go say that they were scared. You ain't going to never get to say what really happened. Because this officer can kick your ass at any time. Get away with it. And it'd be, excuse my language. <laughs> but that, that, that is true. That is real. The officer has the opportunity. A policeman, a patrolman, slave patrol, has the chance and opportunity to do whatever they want, then eliminate you. Can use your past as, as reference to what's going on now, and then use that to also kill or destroy you. So, when I say we must teach our children law, and they must know it, they must, and law, once you know law, you do better. You try your best to do better when you know the actual laws, but you ain't gonna let no police officer roll up on you, this, that, the third, and be like, this, that, and the third, because you know better. And if you know better, you will do better most of the time. But 
Uh, like I said, my name is Don Prince. I could go on this subject forever because I, I, I got a lot of information when it comes to this subject. But my name is Don Prince, and this is Don Prince on Life. Make sure that you like, share, or subscribe. Matter of fact, if you like it, share it. Quit not sharing, quit sharing, quit not sharing people's messages, man. If you listen to this message and you agree with this message, because this is not a message of hate. This is a me message of awakening. So if you heard something in this message, even if you don't want to listen to however long the message is, however long this message is, make sure that you share it. Because it may be something in there for somebody close to you. And they may be able to reiterate the other half. So, it's, it's your, your boy, boy Don, Don Prince, Prince and I'm out. Remember, Don, Don Prince, Prince on life.